This developments on Capitol Hill is Dr. Stephen Caliendo, a professor of political science at North Central College. Dr. Good to chat with you again. Thanks for being with us tonight. Good to see you, Ray. How are you? Doing well, thank you. So let's start with Navarro there. Um, tell us, uh, he refuses to, to appear, refuses to produce documents. Tell us what that does to the proceedings that start next Thursday. In, in some ways, it complicates it, of course, because part of the, um, the reasons to have these hearings is to learn as much as possible about what happened that day, how it unfolded, who was responsible. Uh, on the other hand, uh, a lot of what's happening, as, as we know, of course, is political theater. Uh, and I don't mean that necessarily in a derogatory way, but just to say that, you know, the, the idea that Congress is going to have these hearings in prime time, uh, indicates that they want to make sure that as many eyeballs as possible are on what's going on. And so in some ways, you know, having this indictment, having, you know, not having doc particular documents uh, can be helpful to the message that the Democrats want to get across as well. So he, I mentioned, is the second. The original was Trump confidant Steve Bannon, who also right. refused to testify, would not produce documents here. How has the committee been able to continue to do its work trying to subpoena witnesses when you have uh, some figures who refuse to comply? Well, right, and other high-profile figures like Mark Meadows, who, who's refused to cooperate, but the Justice Department has not indicted uh, to, to date. It's been, I think, since December, I think, when they uh, issued the, the subpoena and asked him for those documents, and he's refused to comply. Now, Meadows is a little bit different because as chief of staff, he, he may have had access to the president in ways that he might have some immunity, um, not so much for Peter Navarro, who was a trade advisor. Uh, and so it's going to be interesting to see how they, how they, man, how they handle all, that, um, uh, all those different pieces. But what's going to be really important, I think, uh, what we need to focus on right during these hearings is who says what that we haven't heard yet. So, so much of this, the press has covered very well, but so much has gone on uh, in behind closed doors with Congress. And we know that Bob Barr, for instance, has, has met with them and other uh, high profile um, members of the uh, administration have met with them. What don't we know? What haven't we heard yet? Um, and if there's something new, that will be interesting. If there's not, uh, it's not going to be much different than what we saw in the, his, the, the second impeachment of President Trump. You talked about Mark Meadows and all those sensitive texts that he was getting while uh, the riot was unfolding. Uh, figures who were saying uh, the president has got to put a stop to this now. Are there more texts out there that we haven't seen when you talk about this previously unreleased material? What else do you think it might be? That's my understanding, right, that there's thousands of texts, uh, some of which we've seen and, and, and most of which we have not seen uh, from some high-ranking people and some noteworthy people uh, asking uh, the president or asking Mark Meadows to ask the president uh, to stop what was happening on January 6th. And so the timing of those will be interesting, the personnel who were involved, who received them, and what they did with that information. Did they respond in any way, uh, either directly to the, to the person who sent the text, or did they act in any way afterwards? And so putting this, um, this puzzle together, and it really is a puzzle, a timeline puzzle uh, with lots of moving parts, uh, will be interesting to see. A few seconds left here. I want to get your impressions on uh, the president's impassioned speech on tighter gun control laws here. What will we be watching for from the House and, and then the Senate? Well, it's hard to imagine that there's not going to be more of the same, which is lots of talk, bills introduced, debates happening, and then no legislation passed. Um, we know, for instance, that in, in the Senate, for instance, we don't have enough, there's not enough votes. Uh, the president wouldn't have enough votes to pass anything. And we know uh, that um, uh, even if there were a majority of votes, that you really need to have 60 votes in the Senate to pass anything. And we, and, and we don't see that. We don't see enough support uh, for gun control legislation there. So the president, I think, has, has uh, continued to look at what might be done in terms of um, executive orders, may have exhausted most of that at this point. It's really up to Congress. And it um, uh, doesn't look like much different is going to happen this time. Stephen Caliendo at North Central College. Always good to get your perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Coming up, Cubs fans might be.